Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my new shop. I was going to wait until everything was done and all cleaned up and pretty, but you know that's never going to happen. So I thought I'd give this to you in several different episodes. What I'm going to do today is walk you through the actual working part of our shop. Now, what I mean by that is we have the main shop. We have another small shop on the other side of this wall. We have a teaching shop behind this wall. We've got a showroom and we have a shipping room. I'm just going to walk you through the main shop. This started off as a bowling lane. My uh, two brothers and I brought my father's business partner out several years ago and the bowling lane we used to lease out but it wasn't doing very well and it wasn't, didn't have a future. So the suggestion was made by my father, why don't you move your shop into the bowling lane? First I wasn't too interested but I came down I thought and I said, looked at it and said, yeah, you know what, a little bit of work, this could actually be a great shop. So if you look at the floor, there's the bowling lanes. It was a small six lane bowling lane. What we did is simply took the gutters out in between and put uh, what amounts to an inch and a quarter worth of plywood. So it's good and stiff. You hardly notice when you talk standing on one or the other. Uh, this is the corner that I do all my hand work. This is where we do a lot of filming of our episodes. We went in, we took the old ceiling out, which was very low. We went in and added uh, two inches of styrofoam insulation all in between the girders to increase the uh, efficiency of keeping it warm in the winter and cool in the summer. We also did that on the outside walls and we had it fire coated and the whole bit. In fact, while you're looking at the ceiling, we put in ceiling fans to kind of keep the air circulating. We've got two air cleaners on either side. We have three power cords, retractable, which is great instead of drag dragging around extension cords. We've got one, two, three air hoses on retractable hoses. So everything's always at your fingertips. It's absolutely fantastic. When I go back to our old shop every once in a while, I can't believe we actually worked in there. So over here, this is our tool cabinet that is an ongoing project. The base section is, uh, it starts off as a mock-up, that's what the top section is, and then we're doing one section at a time. This will eventually be six different pieces. So this one is completed, this one is half completed, and that one is half completed, and the next project will be the top one. And this is uh, various stuff that the guys who have attended, the combat wounded veterans who have attended our Purple Heart projects have given me various gifts, so we proudly display them on the back, and we'll do an even better job of that as we get a little more time. We also use nice foam cushions on the floor, which makes it easy. We're in here for early in the morning till late at night, six days a week, so a lot of work gets done. Anyway, I'll talk, take you through a little bit and show you some of the stuff we have. Recently bought this general 16 inch combination disc and belt sander had a three phase motor on it so we're just in the process of converting it to single phase now i've actually got another disc sander that's a dual disc that one we save for using on brass and also on composite when we're making the handles this one will be for wood only uh, these are the cabinets that we built in one of our episodes i never got that end finished i never got that door finished that'll happen eventually too Tons of drill presses. Oh, I actually want to show you this first. We put in a new dust collecting system. This is an Oneida. I don't remember the model number, but it's the largest that you can get that's single phase. High What's it called? High vac. Uh, high, high vac? It's uh, five horsepower. It's in the other, other shop, but uh, the amount of suction on there is amazing. And we just recently got the remotes, which is great too. And it's fairly quiet. I'll turn it on. We spent a little bit extra money and bought the baffle. I couldn't believe how much it reduced the sound. So you can actually carry on a conversation while it's on. It's powerful enough that you could pretty much run every machine at the same time, although we have blast gates on everything, so we can actually increase the efficiency. This is my, uh, this is the center of our shop. This is my uh, saw stop, which I think is the greatest saw that you can buy. And uh, we have yet to build the extension table. This is just an old door. We moved things in here. We were trying to leave one shop, get this one up and running, and, and keep production up at the same time. So things aren't exactly the way we want just yet. But we'll make a nice extension table on there so that when you're cutting a full length sheet of plywood by yourself, you don't need three other people. Uh, this is my 12 inch jointer. Most of my equipment is General, which came out of Drummondville, Quebec until they closed their business about four or five years ago. Great machine. We, I put in the segmented head as an upgrade to it and it works absolutely fantastic. We run a six inch line to that and it just, nothing comes out of it once you uh, turn that dust collecting on. 
um, an old belt sander. We use this one primarily for doing the ends of the brass saw, uh, the, uh, the, pardon me, the ends of the blades when we're making our dovetail saws. This is my edge sander. It's a six by 80, I think. Comes in handy. Lots of drill presses. You might be interested in this piece of pink ivory I picked up recently. It's uh, thick enough we can actually make some handles out of it, but if you'll notice the price at the top, that's what you pay for a board like that. $1,170. Gotta get a few handles out of that. Uh, let's come down here. Have two really nice lathes. These are also general lathes. We, we, uh, we make a lot of things like uh, marking gauges, handles for our mallets, kerf extend handles, a lot of that. So oftentimes Dave's working on one and, and uh, I don't want to change the setup. So we now have a second lathe that we can, uh, somebody else can be using it. And we bring our suction over here too, which is fantastic to be able to pull all that dust right at the point where it leaves the tool. Um, have a little uh, Excalibur uh, jigsaw. Had one of these a long time ago, sold it because I never used it. Had an opportunity to buy another one recently. I did, and I actually get a little bit of use out of it. This is a mortising machine made by a company called Poitra, and I never pronounced that properly. But it's a great machine. It's in pieces only because we had dismantled it to clean it up a little bit and just haven't got back to it. But we will get that up and running. That's single phase, too, so we don't have to do a conversion. Two more drill presses. Again, generals. This is my 20-inch thickness planer, also general. Love this machine, did the same thing with this, put, installed the uh, bird segmented head. But when you run a segmented head, there's no time when the, the head is not engaged in the wood. The old three knife type, there'd always be a, a moment or a fraction of a second where neither blade was in the wood and it'll allow the head to speed up a little bit. Well, with this one, it's not the case. So you actually need extra horsepower. So we had a five horsepower single phase on it. I recently bought seven and a half horsepower and I just have to have someone help me get it set up but we'll get that up and running shortly. I have quite a collection of bandsaws. This is a, this is the main one. This is another Poitra product. This is a company was bought out by General and uh, they absorbed a lot of their machines into the General line. Some they just discontinued but I, this is a really nice machine 24 inch. We leave this one set up just for cutting Dave does all of this work. The material that we use to make our, uh, our saw handles comes in a sheet, and then we simply draw it out and then cut it out on the bandsaw. It requires a bimetal blade, and it's really dusty. And Anyway, that's just about all we use that one for. This one is a, an old Delta. I was going to sell it, but I got working on it and thought, wow, this is a really good machine. It, too, was uh, three-phase, so we've converted or put a single phase motor on there. I'm just waiting for blades to come and we'll get that up and running. Great machine. Now I have another general 15 inch that we were just gonna sell, but I ended up bringing it over the other day and I may actually leave it here. It's nice to have that small machine just cause I can never have enough band saws. Uh, chop saw. Again, we've got every, almost everything is hooked up to the dust collector. We haven't done that on the band saws yet, but we will. Um, we actually cut a cavity in the wall so we could put this hood made by Rousseau, which if you have a chop saw, it can be one of the messiest tools in the shop. This contains everything. There's dust collection in the bottom and virtually nothing comes out beyond this. Great. And I, I think this has replaced most of the old radial arm saws. All we use it for is essentially cutting boards to rough length. And uh, we do use it for our mitered cuts, but I would always trim it with a plane or a shooting board after the fact. So I don't worry about super accuracy on this. Uh, this is a, our rack that we recently built to store all of our um, clamps, especially in a big shop like this. I don't want to be carting 50 clamps to the back end, so you can just wheel this down. makes it much more convenient. This is a General International product, which I'm not a huge fan of, but this is actually served quite well. This is an oscillating spindle sander, and we use that for doing the inside curves on any of our handles. There's a stack of, of the composite handles before they've been sanded and then buffed and they'll turn black when we do that. This is the other disc sander. We haven't quite decided where we're going to put this, but this is a product out of England. Uh, what's the name of it? You remember? Wadkin. Dual disc, 16 inch disc. So we run an 80 grit on one side and a 120 in the other. Great machine. Great machine. 
That's my little hollow chisel mortar so that we don't really don't use it much anymore. We're going to sell that one. Now, this is one of our latest projects. We built a lumber rack. We've got this big wide open space and I've got tons of wood. So we just are in the process of loading that up and I realize I'm going to need another one because you, you want to have each species have its own spot, but then you've got four quarter, five quarter, six quarter, eight quarter. So it gets kind of complicated if you're going to have a lot of wood. Um, second bench, I actually have a third bench over here. We're going to be teaching in the other room where we're actually going to be set up to have classes. So we'll eventually have a whole lot more benches. This back section, uh, we, we got a really good deal on a bunch of steel shelving. In fact, we got them for free. But we ended up putting them all together, and now we're going to separate them and leave about a three-foot spot in between each one so that we can stand up boards that are too long, shorts that are too long to stick on the shelf, but we can stand them in between. And then we'll have all of our offcuts in here, so, and we'll do it all by species. This is a bunch of used equipment that I uh, frequently buy and fix up and sell. We're going to put a little metal shop in here, a bench with a vise. So there'll be a drill press in here. Got to fix the floor over there. And uh, this is kind of keep the dirty part away from where we're doing our woodwork. So that's the new shop. Uh, we'll run another episode when we get a little closer to being completed. And then we'll also give you a tour when we get the teaching shop done and the showroom. Hope you enjoyed it.